All right, before we dive into some interesting stuff, uh, well, by interesting, I mean actually documenting stuff, let's look at some extremely boring stuff first. Uh, specifically, um, the software safety classification of the 62304. So as you already saw um, in our fancy mapping table here, that uh, you probably noticed that some of the requirements don't apply to some software. So uh, class A, if your software is class A, uh, this is the lowest class. So this is very beneficial if you're class A because you only have to do a few things. For example, you can see Hey, you don't have to do this because this is only for class C. You don't have to do this because this is for class B and C and so on. So class A is kind of like, great. Class B is somewhere in the middle. Uh, you have to do like a few additional things, but it's usually uh, manageable. We'll uh, talk about that in a bit. And in class C, you're just completely screwed usually. So class C sucks and just don't, just don't build class C software. Um, in, in five years of consulting, I think we've never actually had a class C software, so, so that's good. And kind of like the, the rumor is in the 60304, in the new version, there might only be two classes. So this, uh, this, broken, this brokenness of three classes might, might be gone. So um, how do those classes work? If we go back to the standard, then uh, you can see there's this handy uh, flowchart on page uh, 16 or page 20, based on how you count from one to 20. <laughs> So, okay, so if you start out your class C, um, and then the question is, can a hazardous situation arise from the failure of the software? We'll kind of like talk about that more in the risk management uh, course, but let's just like move forward. And then um, I'll just skip ahead all sorts of things. And then in the end, you have this, what severity of injury is possible, non-serious or serious injury um, or death? So um, if, you, if, you just, if we just simplify this uh, by a lot, you can kind of like think about this in, in a certain way. So you have, for example, a class A software in the end would be something which really can cause any sort of injury um, to a patient, like non, like not a non-serious injury, but also not a serious injury. Um, and, and this is kind of like in the flowchart, like, okay, you don't even have a something called a hazardous situation. Um, and, uh, and, and essentially you end up in, in class A. And class A is kind of like super rare because class A tends to be software which is basically almost useless, like administrative software more or less. So in reality, class A software might hardly exist. Um, and I've seen many auditors actually kind of like not accept it if you choose to be class A because they usually say, yeah, you probably have some sort of like um, injury which you might cause in a patient and then that already doesn't make you class A. So realistically class A in many cases doesn't exist and it's a bit of a gamble um, to choose class A even though it might sound easy. Um, the, the, I guess like the game theory gamble here is to go for class B because that's more likely to be accepted by your auditor. So yeah, the whole compliance industry is essentially completely broken but um, I tend to m repeat myself there. Um, all right. And then like the difference between B and C, as we've already uh, talked about, is only the non-serious injury and the serious injury or death. So you could think about this in the sense of like, okay, if you have radiology AI software, which for example, looks at an X-ray image and tells you like, yeah, this person has cancer or this person doesn't have cancer, that actually gets kind of like, kind of like tricky, right? Because like, uh, could that cause a non-serious injury or is it a serious injury? And depending on how you phrase your risk management, you might be able to say there's a non-serious injury. Uh, why? Because it depends on the context. Like if you have a radiologist, for example, reviewing those results and looking at those images, uh, it wouldn't mean you automatically have a person uh, get cancer and go undetected um, if, if the software fails. Um, and in that case, you would probably be class B. But maybe if this is a fully autonomous system and it makes cancer diagnosis or non-diagnosis by itself, then yes, actually a serious injury could occur if you miss cancer and more or less indirectly or directly cause a death of a patient. So as you see, it really depends. And then there are also like super clear cut cases, like if you're running software in a cardiac pacemaker, which well controls the electricity in a pacemaker and controls the heart of a human essentially, then yeah, if, if that software fails, that's obviously death. Um, same for like uh, radiation machines, for example, if you're shooting radiation at people, at patients, um, tumor patients, for example, cancer patients, and you kind of like shoot too much radiation, that might cause literally uh, like quick death. That, that would not be a great experience. And that's class C based on the 6344. All right, so we have these classes and uh, you need to come up with your own class. Uh, 
That's of course something we do in our consulting, but that being said, it's not super hard. And if you just kind of like roll the dice and say you're class B, you have a very high, high likelihood of making the right choice. Okay, so th those are the risk category, uh, sorry, those are the safety uh, classification uh, things in the 6304. There's another extremely boring topic I would like to talk about, which is the V model. So that's something auditors love to look at, even though it's completely detached from reality. And it is on page 63. I actually prepared this video. All right. Okay. So this is the auditor's idea of how you are developing software. And the crazy thing is uh, most people in the regulatory space, they believe this. They think teams develop software in this way, whereas the reality in startups is people write code and people ship stuff. That's how people develop software. And maybe you write tests. That's cool. But... Um, but you definitely don't come up with this extremely over-engineered V model where you do all sorts of crazy activities every time. Um, but I'll just walk you through it to give you like the rough idea of what it's about and then to see how we can actually create documentation and uh, be compliant with this V model, which is more or less the 6304 requirements. Um, all right, so the idea kind of like is you start in the top left corner and then you end up in the top right corner. By the way, this is not the perfect diagram. I couldn't find another one in the 6304. This is talking about something called PEMS, which is something like more connected to hardware, whatever. It's more or less the same. So the idea would be, hey, you like come up with user needs and you like document them. Okay, so you like talk to people like patients or doctors, whoever will be using your software, and you like document these user needs, a bit like user stories. And then you kind of like come up with requirements where you say like, yeah, to fulfill these user stories, then uh, we need to like build certain features. So you have something called uh, requirement specifications or whatever, architecture specifications, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, you have two levels of documentation. The first level is like your user needs. Second level is like kind of like your software requirements, which is super elaborate, a super elaborate way described here. Um, and then I'll, I'll skip ahead over most of this diagram and actually only show you two more things. So the idea is like, okay, you have these two levels, users and features. And then the idea is like on these two levels, you also need to test each level individually. So for the software features, you need tests which test the software features. And we'll talk about that in a bit, how to document that. And for the user needs, you need user tests, which actually um, have a user sit in front of the computer, a patient or doctor in this case maybe, and actually try to achieve the goal uh, which you uh, initially set out to uh, fulfill by documenting the user needs. So for example, if it's about radiology software where radiologists are um, somewhat supported in reading x-ray images, then you might have a user test where a radiologist sits down and has to read an x-ray image uh, with your software and you have to like, uh, well, hopefully uh, you should aim for a successful outcome of this test. Otherwise you kind of like failed. And this is the whole V model. So the idea is like, okay, you go through this, like user stuff here, feature stuff here, and then you test this and you test this. And that's all there is. Now, if you're class C, and this is again simplifying a bit, if, it go, if you're class C, you have to go further down and you have to do something called software detail design, which is which sucks terribly because that's kind of like, the third level. So that's one level underneath your software features. I won't talk too much about that because it's terrible. And then you would need to like uh, test that too. And they kind of like call that software unit tests, even though at the time, I mean, this was 2006. I'm not even sure if, uh, if they had invented the electricity yet at the time. But anyway, they call this software unit tests. So you have like one additional level if you're class C software. So that's the super boring stuff. That's how the V model works. <laughs> if you're still awake, and uh, that's also how the 6304 uh, safety classes work. Um, in the next video, hopefully, we'll actually get some work done, and it'll be a bit more interesting. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.